Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm going to jump right into it. And I want to pick up with a topic that is being discussed again, that I've discussed pretty regularly since, oh God, it was before July. This whole year, really, is something that I've been talking about this a lot. And that is the situation with those in homelessness in the city of Pittsfield. And as many of you probably saw over the past day or two, uh, the those that are still living and camped out inside Springside Park, uh, the city has put out a notice that now, as of December 1st, they are being evicted and kicked out of the park. And this situation, the way we've handled this here is, <laughs> is horrible. It really is. I mean, you look at the timeline of this whole situation. Uh, and from when I started covering this, which was going back into March when they were discussing opening the former St. Joe's High School as a temporary shelter, uh, then the opening of it in April, then the abrupt closing of it in July, uh, the people that were staying there that said all their belongings were thrown out and they were just told to go. Uh, then ServiceNet, the company that was running it and is running it again, uh, along with the city, said they were given ample time. There were only four people displaced. Uh, then we watched encampments going up all over the city. The one that drew a, the most attention was the encampments going up at Springside Park. Uh, the belongings that I found with another individual, the belongings of these people that were staying at the shelter that said their items were thrown out, well, we found a lot of it in the trash, including backpacks and one that had a wallet and court documents and ID, their medications, clothing, uh, all their belongings. And it was as they described, in bags that were tagged with their names on it. Uh, again, the city said, uh, along with ServiceNet, that that was their fault. They were given ample time to retrieve their belongings and they never did. And that's why they were uh, consequently thrown away. And then, uh, you know, people were saying, some of the guests were that stayed there were saying that's not what we were told. We were told if we couldn't pick it up at the shelter, they would move it to Barton's Crossing, uh, where ServiceNet also runs a shelter there, and that they'd be able to retrieve their belongings from there. The whole thing went on with a lot of back and forth, different information. Um, basically, the city and ServiceNet said it was at the fault of the people that were staying there. It was all their fault. And the people that were staying there said, that it was run horribly, that uh, half the time they didn't have hot water in there. Uh, there were all sorts of problems, and, and it wasn't monitored and supervised correctly. Uh, there were just a, a, a lot of different problems that were going on there, and everybody was pointing the finger at each other. But nonetheless, as a result of that sudden closing in July, Springside Park filled up with a lot of people camping out. Uh, I drew a lot of attention to that through this page. People donated. I also promoted a fundraiser for the Western Mass RLC. We still haven't heard how all that money was spent. Uh, that's a little frustrating because it was about $14,000 that was raised through the Western Mass RLC. And I didn't have anything to do with that, but I did promote it through the page. And I know a lot of people uh, on this page donated to that. And it was supposed to be uh, four items for up to 60 displaced people uh, for survival gear. That's exactly how it was worded. So I hope, th I don't know. I'm going to try to get to the bottom of that. I did a, an update on it a few months ago where they said they had spent about seven or eight thousand dollars of it. Uh, but hopefully we find out because you can't have a trust issue there and that needs to be very transparent. So anyway, uh, it drew all that attention. Politicians were going in and out of there. Uh, you, you know, you had city councilors in there. You had the DA in there. You had Joe Kennedy who was running uh, his campaign uh, against Senator Markey. He was running for the Senate, and he was in there. And there were Senator Adam Hines was in there. Trisha Farley went there. I mean, we had so many 
people that went there. The mayor went there. They set up a porta potty in there. The parks department was in there. All these people were in there. And basically what the way they handled that is the idea in the beginning when I started talking about it a lot was to bring enough attention to it to get an emergency shelter reopened. That didn't happen. Instead, they brought in a porta potty. They told them they could camp out there. Uh, it was it turned into a massive debacle to be kind. Uh, it didn't really provide the professional services or help to take care of this situation. It wasn't fair to the people in the neighborhood. Uh, it even got to the point where a young man who was staying at the park took his life in there. Uh, the first day I went in there, uh, first responders had to be called because there were people unresponsive in the park that needed medical attention. Uh, there were dirty needles showing up all over the place. Uh, a lot of drinking going on in there. It was a mess. And the city just enabled and let this go, 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 and go. And now, all of a sudden, well, we've been kind to you. Now you have to get kicked out, basically. Why didn't they address this from the beginning? They knew winter was coming. It's not like winter is some anomaly that this winter thing just popped up. Who would have thought? You mean the temperature will actually go down and it could get cold? and then precipitation could freeze into the substance we call snow? How odd. Why didn't this whole situation, why didn't they address this and handle this correctly from the beginning? And tell the people there, you can't be staying here. Winter's coming. We're here to assist you. What do we need to do? But you can't be staying in the park. That's how this needed to be handled. But now it's just throwing a notice on them. You got two weeks to get out. And it's, again, just the city kicking that can down the road. That's all it is. It's, it's unbelievable how we're handling this. All the politicians that were in that park when this was really out in the public eye, uh, where are they? All these people that went there would brought food and had photo ops and did everything to, oh, we're, gonna, we're here to help you and we want to do this. And we, where are they now? Where is all, where's all this now, is it not cool now because we're not in an election? I mean, we've got council elections coming up <laughs> next year, but, you know, I, I guess they're too far away to really get involved in these kind of issues. My God. So I'm going to do a follow up on what happens to these people staying there. A lot of them, that, that bridge was never put back up of trust between ServiceNet and some of the people that stayed there before because it wasn't that long ago, you know, that their belongings were thrown out five months ago. So, and now they're told being to go back there. And, and we were told there were so many problems in there, so many problems that a lot of the women were afraid to be in there. Uh, it was not run correctly that half the time they didn't have access to a hot shower because there was no hot water there. I mean, there were so many problems. What have they done to bridge that gap? And why are some of these people in the park? And I'm not, believe me, they shouldn't be in the park. It's a public park. But why are we just kicking the can down the road? And why didn't we handle this the right way when this was out in the public eye? My God. If I, if I was in city government, I would have never, I mean, I've stayed on this as much as I could, but, you know, I'm telling you, this is the kind of stuff that makes me want to run for office because I just can't understand how this got to this again. And there's still a lot of people staying at that park. So I will be doing a follow-up on that, and I will be doing a follow-up trying to find out what is happening with the people there, what is, how things are going at the shelter, which is finally reopened, that should have never been closed, and a lot of mistruths and misinformation was spread about that. Uh, the city and ServiceNet had said several times that the Diocese of Springfield evicted them, told them they had to be out of there by the 1st of August, and that's not any of the information that I've received on that. And, and then now the diocese has let them back in there. This time the mayor has stepped away from it, saying, well, this is between ServiceNet and the diocese. Nothing to do with me. Nothing to see here, folks. 
so anyway, uh, there's that all to, to talk. There's a lot to talk about, and I'm going to do a follow-up, and just I've got a lot more research to do. And again, we're still in the middle of this big spike in, in uh, COVID cases. So that's concerning. That's why none of this should have happened. For this to happen at a time in the middle of a pandemic and they allowed that was, I mean, horrible for public health. Horrible. But again, just like the mayor attending her big celebration at the park with 70 or 80 people, which had you know some of our city councilors there and everybody celebrating a political victory, uh, right after she told us, you know, we got to double down on our efforts. And yes, they had masks on, but they were not six feet apart. Maybe at times they were, but I mean, look at the pictures that I Berkshire's posted. They were not six feet apart. And then within a week after that, we have a spike. You know, certain restaurants, a certain restaurant in Pittsfield that people were complaining about a lot to me uh, openly. I saw many people complaining. Some sent me pictures saying, can you believe this is happening? Uh, and that particular restaurant I want, has a city councilor involved with it. And, you know, things didn't look like they were being done correctly there either. And then that same city councilor promoted her restaurant during a council meeting. The first time I ever heard her speak. I mean, some of the stuff we're seeing here, that's why these political cliques have to go. So anyway, I'm going to get back on, on the thing with the homelessness. Uh, there's the next council meeting. There'll be enough to talk about on that. Another thing I want to mention briefly before I wrap this up is the situation with the flags at Park Square. And the Kiwanis put these flags out there every year in honor of our veterans. And I'm sure it's flags of honor. I'm sure people have seen it for years now going on at Park Square. This year, there is a flag uh, for firefighters and a flag for police officers. And you've probably seen the flags. They're the black and white ones, and they have the thin red line in the middle of them honoring fallen firefighters. And one has a thin blue line, I guess, honoring fallen police officers. And uh, somehow this has turned into, I guess, a problem for people in the city. And I wasn't aware of this. I support our police and fire department. And all of a sudden there's people saying, uh, I, Drew Herzig, I think he's on the Human Rights Commission or something. He's been pretty open publicly about it, saying that, that police, the thin blue line flag represents white supremacy which blew me away. Since when? Since when did that flag become a white supremacist flag? So should our chief of police know this? Should officers that are people of color on the Pittsfield Police Department, should they know this? What is going on? That's a first that I ever heard that. I thought that was just in support of our police officers. So I guess you could debate the fact that, you know, that park, this event is to honor veterans. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm very confused on that one. So that's one. I'm, I'm curious what other people think. Uh, I didn't have a problem with it. And I didn't know that these flags, the thin red line and thin blue line, were now symbols of hate and white supremacy. I'm blown away by that. I've supported our police officers and firefighters and still do. Does that mean there's never been a cop who's done something bad or never been a fireman who's done something bad? Of course not. Anything that involves humans, somebody's done something bad. But what is the, I mean, you don't th go against the whole police department or the whole fire department. I'm confused by that. I really am. So I'd need to hear more of an explanation on why that supposedly are symbols of white supremacy. I, I don't know. I'm still trying to take that in. So anyway, feel free to comment on that too if you want. I'm, I'm open to hear what anybody's got to say on that, but I support our Pittsfield Police Department. I support our fire department. They're our first responders. They're, they're some of the most important people we have in the community. So I support them, 100%.
Um, but that is it for now. I'm going to wrap it up. I will do another video either tomorrow or Saturday morning, probably tomorrow. But I always say that and ends up being the next day. But that is it for now. Everyone, stay safe. This These numbers are spiking right now. Uh, hopefully that gets under control quickly. You know, the vaccines being talked about a lot. So hopefully that's a few months away and, and just you know, know that hopefully next year we can go back to normal, some some type of normalcy where we can go out and see some live music and hang out with each other and try to get our lives back to a little bit of where they used to be. I don't know if we'll ever be back to where we used to be after this whole mess, but hopefully we can get some type of normalcy and be able to gather socially and and be around our friends and family again. So stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, stay away from people if you can, and uh, you know, be safe, and uh, hopefully our city leaders lead by example. And uh, I will catch you all in the next day or two.